Praise God. In the name of the Lord, let's turn to a Luke. Uh, well, let's stand for God's word this morning. Luke chapter 13 and verse number 6. In the English Standard Version. I don't know if we've ever read this version before, but we are this morning. Amen. Because all the religious people don't go here anymore. Amen. And so we can just read whatever version we want because it just fits our day today. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Luke chapter 13, verse number 6 says, He told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on, on this fig tree, and I have found none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Sir, let it be alone this year also until I dig around it and put on manure. Then if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Amen. I want to preach this morning on how to deal with disappointment in your life. Amen. How many of you have been disappointed in your life before? Would you raise your hand? pretty sure there's disappointment even in the house today amen let's pray lord in in the name of jesus i pray for this people on this dedication sunday for our children lord i ask you to just come in with your presence and abide in this house this morning heavenly father i just ask you in jesus name lord to just lift the hearts and the soul and the mind of each and every person that's here today we bind together in one mind and one accord lord every visitor that's here this morning i'm sure they have come with disappointments and failures even in their life god and i ask you to lift them this morning and to give them a word from you today in jesus name amen god bless you turn to your neighbor and say you're not a disappointment you are not a disappointment you are not a disappointment amen now let's give the lord a standing ovation pray you may be seated for just a moment amen i'm sure you're going to want to get up and amen god's word here in a little while but uh, just for a moment you may take your seats uh, turn to somebody around you again somebody that you didn't already tell and tell them you are not a disappointment find somebody new if you can around you you are not a disappointment <clears throat> and i hope today that you come here and you're not disappointed i hope that God, life finds you well i hope that life finds you happy this morning and that Everything is certainly going your way. How many want everybody to have a peaceful and a prosperous life this morning? Would you raise your hand? All right, all across the building. I'm sure that's the feeling that we all have. But, you know, the facts are that we're not always going to be happy. And the facts are that we're going to be disappointed. You might even get disappointed before you leave this building today. You might even get disappointed in the restaurant this afternoon that your food wasn't quite like you ordered it. Because life is not consistent sometimes. And when I look at Jesus in the story, Jesus was disappointed. He was disappointed. And he was disappointed because the religious system had let him down. He had come and they were using, he, they, he had come to implement a new, new religious order for his community. And they were using his name actually to not lift people but to crush people. And he said, I am disappointed in this system. And so he gives us this illustration of the fig tree. And, and, and Jesus walks through, the Bible calls it a vineyard of fig trees. And he walks through this vineyard of fig trees. And he comes up on a tree that he says, I came here last year. And I've come here for the last three years. And there's no fruit on this tree. It is not bearing figs. And, and so he used this parable and so a parable is a is kind of a way to tell a story using uh you know not real characters to represent a real life situation and so he tells this parable of walking into the the vineyard of fig trees and he, and he says this this fig tree is in a in a whole grove of trees and all the other trees are growing he said but this tree is not growing and there's something wrong and he says, this tree is a symbol of the religious order that's in, that, that is on the, on the scene right now. He said, because 
it is it is a system of religion and it is it looks like a religion it looks like it's here to help and to feed and to nourish but yet it is bearing no fruit and there's no productivity in this religious system and he says we need to get rid of it and we need to cut it down and i want you to know this morning that jesus christ the last thing that he wants in our city today is that he does not want another religion in this city he does not want another church that is going through a, a social network. He doesn't need another social network. There is a Facebook, there's an Instagram, there's Snapchat, and there's all of that for all those social networks. Jesus does not need another social network here on the street corner. Come on, somebody, talk, talk to me today. Agree upon God's word. He doesn't need that. But what God needs is a church of the living God that is producing fruit so people can be nourished and fed and they can grow and their harvest of souls can be won. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, there's, there's, three, peop there's three things in the story that you need to understand. There's the owner of the fig tree is disappointed because... The tree is not producing fruit. And he's disappointed. And then there's the manager of the grove who is disappointing. Because the job hasn't got done right. And there's the tree in the story that is dysfunctional. And, and, and there are all parts of these story in our lives on a daily basis. Now, maybe, how many, have, again, I think it was 100%, but just show by the sign of hands, how many have been disappointed in your life? Would you raise your hand? Right, we all have. Now, I, I don't know exactly what it was, but maybe you sowed good seed, but you didn't see the results that you were looking for. Right? You sowed seeds of blessing. Maybe somebody came to you and they needed a, they needed a, a, a handout or a loan, and you gave that to them in good faith. But they turned that blessing you gave them into almost a curse and it didn't come back to you in the, the form that you thought it would come back to you. You sowed good seeds of blessing, but it came back far less in return. You sowed, maybe some of you have sowed seeds of trust. But, your, but those seeds of trust went out, and when the tree grew up, it wasn't the trust that you thought it was. It was broken, and it, and it hurt, and it, it hurt your life. And there, was some, there may be some others of you this morning that sowed seeds of hope for somebody's life but no hope was returned in fact it came back void and it's just disappointment it's just disappointment and i wanted to give you the term of disappointment here this morning there's a definition that says disappointment is a feeling of sadness our frustration because something was not as good attractive or satisfactory as expected or because something hoped for did not happen man does that not fit people's lives something you hope for didn't happen you you your your children got promised they would be a blessing but they've come back to you in a curse your your marriage it was supposed to be this wonderful beautiful thing but it's it's not quite the way you thought it was your job was supposed to be the end all and you were supposed to never be poor again and you were supposed to never have a zero balance in your account again but it it didn't happen that way because life is full of disappointments right it's full of things that started out good and there was a lot of hope for, but it came back less than what you had hoped for. You gave your child, maybe you gave your child an incredible advantage, right? You worked hard to, to build a harvest for that child and, and you didn't want them to work like you worked. You wanted to put them ahead in life. I mean, you wanted to put your children ahead in life before. But they... They squandered that opportunity. Well, there's nothing that hurts worse than that, is it? And they didn't quite go to the pig pen, but they made a mess of it, right? They made a mess of it. And maybe you, you came here this morning and you've forgiven people and you've given them one chance after another, but they took advantage of that chance too, and now there's nothing left to give. I don't know where life finds you at today. But we all have one thing in common, Sister Ceci, and that is that we have been disappointed before. We've been disappointed. And, and there's a reason. Somebody shout reason. 
There's a reason this story is in the Bible. It didn't, it didn't, it's not just a, a cute little parable. It's not just placed here to let you know there's a fig tree and because there's no fig trees in El Paso that you just, and so that El Paso would know there's a fig tree. That, that's not the reason. That, that the reason this story is in the Bible is because the Lord knew that in 2016 there would be people that even in a church like today with the glory of God coming down there would still be disappointment in life. And Jesus put this story right in the middle of the Bible. There's a reason for the story. And, and he, know, he knew that there would be people that would have ideals that were birthed in heaven. But yet, there would be disappointment. He knew there would be people that would have dreams and visions and hope. And there would be new life even. But yet, it wouldn't come to fruition. You know what I found out, church, is that life has the power to break you down. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Life has the power. Life has the power if you let it to get on the inside of you and it will tear you into shreds with all of its different wind currents that blow in. I mean, this week, a, a different wind current could blow in your life and it could tear your life in a completely opposite direction and you wouldn't even know what hits you. Life is a weird way of speaking, doesn't it? It's a weird way of speaking. Life can literally rip you up. Amen? Anybody know what I'm talking about? It can rip you up. And, you know, this is what I found out about life, Brother Mike, is that, is that you can look back 10 years ago in your life and, and, and you can see a situation you were going through and then you can compare the situation to what you were going through 10 years ago to what you're going through today and you will literally stop and pray, Lord, let me go back. Because what I thought was bad and tough on me 10 years ago was nothing. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm preaching to you this morning. I'm preaching about that this morning. And you're like, Lord, if, Lord, if it's possible, let me go back. Because that was easy. Right? The, 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 the faucet didn't work in the bathroom. Lord, please let me work on the faucet that ran out through my house and filled it up with water. That would be easy. Right, Brother Michael? Be easy. Because life has a way of changing, doesn't it? And what I found out is that life as you get older, Brother Gino, is that life when you get older, it doesn't have less problems, but the problems go deeper sometimes. Because it's not just you involved. But it's your children, man, and when it gets to your children, and when it gets to people that you love deeply, and you get older, and when it just, it has a way of ripping you. It has a way of ripping you. And so, I wanted to give you the story this morning because, you see, the owner became insistent. He, he said, he came to the grove, and he says, I've come to this grove for three, I've came to this grove for three years, and I, this tree is not growing. When I came last year at this time, there was no fruit. And I've come 12 months later and there's no fruit. And he says, either it's got to grow or it's got to go. Amen? And, and what I'm saying today and what I believe the scripture is speaking to us this morning is this. Is there's things that are not growing in our life. There's things that are not productive for our ministry. There's things that are not productive for your, for your family or your marriage. And what I'm preaching this morning and what I believe the Word of God is saying to us today is either it's growing or it's going. It's either got to grow or it's got to go. Amen. Praise God. Because this is the thing I know. If it's not growing, Brother McFerrin, it's dying. Right? And dead things take up space. Right? And space is where God can work something new in our life. You know, the religion had become, so con had become such a religion of condemnation that, that rather than giving life, it was giving out death to people, death sentences to people. And Jesus, Jesus was so disappointing. He said, this, this religion that we've got going on with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, it's not a blessing to anybody. And, and in fact, 
He said, there's no fruit. Have you ever noticed that? That people that complain and people that, that worry about people that, you know, they try to dress people up when they come into the church and they, they just barely get saved and they try to change them overnight and they don't let any growing process happen. They just want to fill them up with rules and regulations and they want to tell them what to do all the time. And, they, and instead of using the Bible, they got, they got a rule book they hand to the people and they put them in a discipleship class and they got to teach them how to dress and they got to teach them how to, how, to, how, to, how to do their hair and they got to teach them what to wear and not to wear and they got to teach them all this kind of stuff and they just want to dress them up. And Jesus said, he says, this is just religion. And he says, we don't need religion anymore because religion's not doing anything for us. Religion's not causing any growth to happen. Come on, somebody. Do you hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, in fact, it's causing, it's driving people out. It's drying up the church. It's drying up the, the spiritual aspects of the house of God. He, in fact, Jesus was so frustrated with it. Do you, do you feel what I'm saying? Jesus was so frustrated with it. He said, well, Pastor, what does this have to do with babies? Well, I don't want babies to grow up in a dead church. I don't want babies to grow up in a church they don't want to be a part of, that they just come to because it's a social network. They come on Christmas and Easter. I don't want them just to come on Christmas and Easter. Because when you have a religion, that's when people come on Christmas and Easter. Because they don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I want them to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want there to be growing in their life. Hallelujah. I want them to have productivity in their life. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. And we should never dress them. Jesus said, hey, praise God. In the name of Jesus, we shouldn't have a religion. We shouldn't have a religion. See, it, it said this is not a blessing. May the church always be a blessing. May the church be a blessing to all people. It shouldn't just be for white people. I, I'm sad for people that have churches full of just white people. And I'm sad for people that just have a church full of black people. And I'm sad for people that just have a church full of Hispanic people and people from, from Asia. I'm sad when you just have one kind of church of just rich people. Where the rich people go to this church on this side of town. And where the poor people go to the church on the other side of the tracks. I'm sad when church is like that. That's not what Jesus had envisioned. Jesus had envisioned a church for all people at all time that they could come to Jesus Christ whenever, ever they needed Christ in their life. That's what church is. And when Jesus uses the fig tree, understand that the fig tree is in the Bible because it's a, every time it's in the Bible, it was placed there as a sign of peace and prosperity. And the first fig tree was found. Guess where it was found? It was found in the book of Genesis. I want to just set up something here this morning. In Genesis chapter 3. Because in Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve realized they were naked. And so they took the fig leaves off the tree and they covered themselves. Amen. I took my wife to New York company yesterday and bought her some some outfits for work and I sure wish we were buying fig leaves instead they would have been much easier to pluck amen but but uh, they found those fig leaves to cover their nakedness now I find it amazing that Jesus uses the story of this fig tree to expose the nakedness of the religious system. Amen. And in one passage, the word of God says that the prophet says he would, he would, he would take off the skirts of his people to show their nakedness. And I really believe that's exactly what Jesus is doing. He's saying this religious system is bearing and is naked and it has nothing to offer anybody. Praise God. I pray that when you come through those doors that you find that you find fruit that you can harvest in your life this morning. I find there's a spirit of the living God is flowing in your life. And I pray this morning that you can feel the anointing of God in this church. And I pray that that cross still has a meaning for your life today. Jesus said the, the leadership, he said the leadership is naked. 
Well, that's scary. That's scary. I, when I was learning to, to speak, they said, you know, to get over your fears, they would say, just imagine everybody out there naked, and, and then it'll be easy to speak to them. No, that's scary. That's scary. But it sure makes it easier to speak, Brother Michael. What do you have on today? No kidding. Amen. And verse 6 says, and he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found, watch this, he found none. None. Praise God. We may not have the biggest church in this city, but I want you to know there will always be fig, figs on the tree. There will always be new souls in this church because the doors are open for everybody to come in God's house. You see, the man knew what he had planted. He planted figs, a fig tree. But he also knew what was growing was not the same as what he had planted. I want you to know this morning, church, and these, these kids that are going to be dedicated, parents that, that hold your children that's going to be dedicated, I want you to know there is a reason you were planted on this earth. You were planted for a reason. Your children have a purpose in their life. Amen. Come on, somebody talk to me today. Hallelujah. But as he walks through the vineyard, I wonder today what he's finding in the vineyard. Some of you are just now finding your purpose. Praise God for it. You know, I look at some of these young kids up here playing, man. I mean, two years ago, you wouldn't even ever thought they would be on this platform. But they're up here. You know what? They, we don't have to beg these young kids to be up here early. They're here early. I got to get that. I got to get that Lexus over the mountain now. Her Lexus. Over the mountain because I know there's going to be a group of kids waiting for us to get here. Because you know why? They know they got a purpose in their life. They know they got a purpose, and their purpose is not to be a thug. Come on, somebody. Their purpose is not to be a thug. Their purpose is not to be a drug addict. Their purpose is not to be a pimp. Their purpose is not to go make Fs in school. But their purpose, they're finding their purpose on this platform. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you what, there's going to be a day where these kids up here are going to rip it. Because you know why I know that? Because they got fruit that's growing. Amen. Got fruit that's growing. You may not quite see it yet because the fig leaves are big. I don't know, you may not know about fig trees, but I grew up in Louisiana, we had fig trees. And the fig leaves are big, and sometimes it's high the fruit. But there's coming a day where the fruit's gonna grow, and there's gonna be a harvest. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna be a harvest. Amen. See, I want to give you another observation about the fig tree. Is it's never at its full strength until it's producing what, we, what it was planted to produce. And what I'm saying about that, Auntie, is this, is that you will never be at your full strength until you are producing what you were intended to produce. You know, you, you just can't decide you want to produce oranges when you're a fig tree. Or apples. Or whatever. Strawberries or whatever. Right? You, you were intended to produce figs. Then you have to be a fig tree. See, could it be what I'm, what I'm saying this morning? Go with me. I'm not going to be a long time. I know it seems like I'm going to be a long time, but I only got one page left, so just hang with me. There's, there's, there's hope. I'm giving you some hope out there this morning. So I got a few more lines to say, but let me just tell you this. Could it be, listen to what I'm going to tell you right now. I hope this can help your day. Maybe your week. This is really what's getting a hold of me this week. Could it be that you're disappointed with your life because you're trying to produce something God never put in you to produce?
I know you're thinking about that. But it's true. See, God, this is what I've learned about God in my 49 years. God will never reach into your soil of what you are and try to make you produce something that you're not. He may not have produced you to be a real social person, so maybe that's not you. You know, you look weird when you're, when you're really an introvert trying to be an extrovert. And you look real weird when you're an extrovert trying to be an introvert. If that makes any sense. See, God picked me because He planted me. And He picks my life from what He has put in the ground. And when God sees what He put in the ground in my life, think about it this morning. See, God came into the soil of my life when I was in my mother's womb. And God planted me to be something. And when God comes along in the vineyard of fig trees, and He sees me producing what He planted me to be, guess what God does? God picks it. God picks it. And enjoys it. And it's a sacrifice to Him. It's a blessing to Him. You know, God planned me to be one thing and then try to pick something else. See, you know, you put, you put a screwdriver in my hand and I might, I might cut myself. I have a toolbox at my house. What are you laughing at, Brother Mike? I ain't even got to the point, but you already know what I'm going to say. See, I got a hammer in my toolbox. I got rusty old, I got things that's got dust all over them. You put that in my hands and brother, Art, I don't even know how to use most of it. I just have a toolbox just because I'm a husband. You, you put a wrench in my hand and put me on the hood of my car and I'm going to use the wrench to flag down somebody to help me. But you put a mic in my hand, and it works. It works. It works. I, 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 through Christ, I'm okay with this. But tools kind of make me get a little bit wobbly. You put electrical wire in my hands, Brother Art, and you send me to your job, and I'm going to high wire that place, and it's going to blow up. And shock myself and probably kill myself. See, I'm not good with those things. Why? Because God didn't make those things a part, really, of my life. My, my wife bought me a toolbox and all kind of tools, and, 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 and somehow they got lost. I mean, like, I just have a fragment that remains. In fact, you know, the truth of the matter is, she, she can do it better. She can probably work with them better than I can. It, it runs in her family. Right? Yeah, praise God. You know, I had someone that, 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 that left the church one time, and then they put it all over Facebook. You know, when I got to the new church, the pastor met me there, and he helped me do this and helped me do that. Well, you know what? Pray, you know, I, I'm sorry, because, because God didn't call me to pull wire. I'm in your way. If you want me to pull wire with you, I'm going to be in your way. And we both going to fall out of the rafters. Amen? Praise God. See, now if you need a babysitter, I can do that okay. That's another thing. But what I found out, God didn't put me. I know this sounds kind of like, you know, all men should be able to do this kind of stuff. But, you know, honestly, if some of you guys are sitting there like thinking like, how can he not be able to pull wires or to work with wrenches or not or use a hammer? Well, you know what? Come on up here and preach a little while. Let's see how you do. <laughs> we'll trade. We'll trade. This month you preach, I work with you. I will do your job. And you'll see. That if you weren't called to do this, it's not going to go good. 
Just like I would blow up your job. <laughs> if you want me to do your plumbing job, I might get stuff flowing everywhere. Where are we going for lunch? I remember one time we, we had a travel trailer back when we were young and dumb and didn't know what to do. We were pulling a 32-foot trailer with a Cherokee Jeep. We went all the way from here to Chicago and back, came back home. And people would drive by us going, we were young and dumb. But you know, what? the dumbest thing I ever did was try to fool with the black water valve. I got, to the, I got to the park in Chicago, pulled in, and I got the hose. I knew what the hose was that you hooked from the black water valve. I didn't really know what black water valve was until I pulled the latch. But I hooked up the, 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 the auntie, I hooked the cable, the, the cord, the, 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 uh, the whole hose. There's, you know, they got those hoses that extend like this. And I hooked the hose to the black water valve. And I thought I got it real tight with those tools that she bought me. <laughs> this is bad. And I put the other end down into the sewer hole. That should have given me a clue right there what was about to happen. Everybody in the park, everybody was just loving. Every, picnics were going on. Dog, I mean, it was just beautiful. She was so proud of. She was so proud of me. We were like like twenty two, twenty four. She was so proud of me. She knew that I was, a, I was kind of mechanically inclined like her dad. And she was just, you know, you marry your dad. And she, there he is right there. He's doing, he's hooking it up. It looked good. Chaplain, it looked good. It's so good to have you back. See, it looked good. It looked like it was going to work. But praise God. When I, I say praise the Lord because it comes from the Lord too. I, when I pull the valve to the black water hose, we had been storing it up for several days. <laughs> when I pulled the valve, the hose broke free. I went on inside. Didn't even know. But do you know, the neighbor came and knocking on the door. Hey! Good to have neighbors. Treat your neighbor as yourself. We had black water all over the place. Everybody knew those country bumpkins from El Paso. Praise God. You don't want me to do your plumbing job. I wasn't called to do that. See, you were called to produce what is already inside of you. God's not going to make you be something He didn't call you to be. Come on, somebody. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, He's going to pick you. He's never going to pick you when you're producing something you're not. He's only going to pick you when you're producing something that He wanted you to produce. See, you will never have peace and prosperity. Listen to what I'm saying. Until you're producing what you're called to produce. Verse 7 said, And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on the fig trees, and I've found none. Cut it down. Why should it be used? Use up the ground. See, th this tree was not growing See, this is what you, you need to understand about this tree. It was not growing in the same ground that the other trees were growing in. And, and we have a tendency that when we're disappointed with our life, that we say, you know, well, it is, it's the last church I came from, you know, that we were supposed to do this and we didn't do that and they didn't have a blah, 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 blah. And, and I wanted to be in the choir. I couldn't really sing, but I wanted to lead part. And, and they didn't want me to be in the choir. And, and, and I wanted to do this and that. And, and, and they burned me and now I'm burned and now my life's like this. No, you know what? It's not the ground.
see. All the trees in the grove grew in the same conditions. They had the same conditions. They had the same weather system. They had the same water system. They had the same times where the gardener forgot to water. I mean, there was disappointment in the grove with the trees. But you know what? All the trees grew except this one. And, you know, sometimes it's not the environment that's causing us to be a failure or to be disappointed with our life. Sometimes we need to check our own self. Hey, man, I'm preaching today. Come on. Hey, man, I'll tell you this. You know, you can say, well, my marriage can't make it because, because you know, it's, all this has happened. But you know what I've learned? Is somebody else has gone through worse than you are going through. And they made it. It's, it's do you want to make it? Do, do you want to grow? Do you want to be productive? Or you just want to die? Or do you just want to just wilt and die and, and, and suck in all the negativity in your life and in your marriage? You know, and, and you say, well, you know what? I need a bigger church and I need this and I need that in church and I need a, I need a whatever. I need a bigger teletron and I need more lights and I need a gym and I need whatever. Well, you know, no, you are the church. You are the church. This is, this, these walls are not the church. You are the church. God made you to be the church. So be the church. Be what you want God to be in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't be a father. I can't be a father. No, I can't be a father. Because my dad wasn't a father. And his dad wasn't a father. And he was an alcoholic. And he, was, he ran around on his wife. And blah, 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 blah. No, no. Stop blaming it on the environment. Because all the other trees grew. Uh, I can't be a mother. My mom left us and blah, 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 blah. No, you can be a mother. I, I can't be a Christian for too long because I, I get dissatisfied and, and I, just, I, I just, you know what, I keep having a longing for the world and I keep wanting to be the world and I try to live for God for a while, but then that call for the world comes in and I go back to it and I go back to the vomit over and over and over. I don't think I'm ever going to make it in the house of God. That's a lie out of hell. You can make it because other trees make it. There's people here in this church that are in the same condition you're in. And they made it. And they're growing fruit. Amen. You can make it. You can grow anywhere. I met her at church. They had eight people out in the country. I mean, there wasn't a, I mean, it was horrible. To be quite honest with you. But it was a church. She made it. Verse 8 says, and he answered him, sir. So, so the, this is what's kind of cool about the story. The owner comes in, really, Jesus comes in, and, and he says, hey, let's cut it down. It's not working. Get rid of it. And, you know, the manager says, sir, you're right, but can I just offer you my opinion? Can I, can, let's just think about this. He says, sir, let it alone this year, so give it some time until I dig around it, and I like this part, and put on some manure. How many of you have ever been through some manure in your life? There's lots of words for manure. And he said, he said, give it another chance. He says, let's, let's be persistent. And let's let it persevere for one more year. Now, watch this. He did not deny that there was not disappointment. He didn't deny that there was a problem with the tree. See, a lot of times we want to just ignore that there's a problem and act like it didn't happen and go on. And there's still a problem when we get there next week. He didn't say, well, really, Lord, there's nothing wrong with the tree. Look, the other, look at all the other trees and get his attention off the one tree that's not growing. He didn't say, you know, look at the rest of the grove and look at all those trees and, and, and let's move on. No, he didn't, deny, he didn't deny that there was a problem. He said, give me a year so we can fix the problem. And what I'm preaching today is this. Praise God. We can't give a fig tree another year and not give ourselves another year. I, I ask you, give God one year of your full-time attention for one year and see what God will do with your life this next year. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 
You'll give your dog another year to get it right in boarding school or media school, but you won't even give yourself another year. And he said, this is, I like this part. Look at this verse. He says, and let me dig around it. Woo, hallelujah. Let me dig around it. I'm digging for something this morning. See, watch this. He didn't say, let me go trim the bad leaves off, Gino. Sister Anna. Because he knew that the problem wasn't in the show level. What was showing. But he knew the problem was in the root level. You can't fix the tree by fixing the leaves. You got to dig around the roots. Praise God. Young people that are here with your children this morning, this applies to your children because you know what? Praise God. If you'll dig around their life when it's early and you'll get their root system started in the right environment and the right soil and the right water and the right sunshine, Praise God. Amen. See, where it shows, amen, let's give the Lord praise for all our kids coming in right now. <laughs> Don't we love them? Amen. We love them at the close of the service. See, where it shows is not where it grows. See, I got to get down and dirty. Amen. Amen. Like we've got to get down and dirty sometimes, amen, to fix our problems. Let's just stand in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, a lot of people want figs. Everybody say figs. A lot of people want figs, but they don't want to dig. Right? See, we want what other people's got, but we don't want to dig for what they've had to do to get it. We want figs like they've got on their fig tree, but we don't want to put any go through any manure. Amen. Amen. See, that person standing beside you that you envy their life, which you shouldn't do in the first place, but you envy their life, you don't know what kind of manure they've had to go through to get it. Come on. Come on. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. You see, because failure, listen to me, can sometimes be fertilizer for the next level. I heard one preacher say, the crap can be com is really compost. That's another preacher said that. Praise God. See, sometimes the greatest growth comes from my greatest disappointment. Because it's in that disappointment that God takes me and works on me to make me into the man of God or the woman of God that he really wants me to be in my life. Come on, somebody say praise the Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him right now.